uh, hi, YouTube viewers. This is Bob Ost. I'm actually in gallery view today instead of speaker view for some reason or other. But nevertheless, I'm introducing our panel today. Today is April 8th. It's the true community gathering. Um, many of you know the, know the routine by now. We've been doing this since April 17th. This actually is the 100th consecutive community gathering since April 17th, 2020. So well, wish us a happy 100th anniversary, everyone. Um, and um, if you are exploring YouTube, you should find 85 to 90 of, of those things already recorded and, and waiting for you to look, look at if you want to catch up over for, for the last couple of years. Um, today, we're going to be talking to some of the people that are near and dear to my heart. Um, these are people that helped us make our annual benefit happen this year. Uh, last year, uh, we had to face the prospect of doing a, uh, a virtual benefit, which I just had never, never imagined doing in my life. But um, we figured it out. We put together the, the pieces of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a program for, the, for an evening. Uh, I decided that we had to do something different. Since we weren't serving undercooked chicken and, and wine and cocktail hours and all that sort of stuff, um, I decided that we had to do something that would, that would be as exciting as a meal at Caroline's Comedy Club would be. Um, so we have been doing something called True Speak, where we solicit uh, submissions from writers of short pieces that are about current issues that really are important to, to the writers. And then we go through all of the submissions, and then we came down with came up last last year. We came up with mm -hmm. came up with an evening of six pieces, um, and then uh, this year we actually found seven pieces. Um, some of them were created by the people that you see in the room today. I have two two of the directors and two of the tech people here here, to, here today. So uh, I'm going to introduce you to my guests today. I'm going to start with Eben because Eben kind of was the associate, uh, the executive producer with me, um, Eben and, and Janelle Scarborough. Uh, it just wouldn't have happened without, without, without her. It, uh, Eben, tell us what the executive, what the technical director of the event had to do. And don't spare um, any of the gory details. <laughs> uh, there are things that we cannot say in public. <laughs> <laughs> but, but generally speaking, um, uh, first of all, we, we had to make sure that um, our directors knew what they were up against and why we uh, wanted to repeat the uh, very successful um, first year we had with True Speak, which was basically take a producer, take a director, have a writer and have a technology side for people all starting, all working on the project from the get-go um, because each have a different input to what the final piece could be and maybe even should be. Um, and, and we had to match them up. We had to um, make sure that the, the team gelled and worked together. So the, the whole thing stemmed from um... We we were we were in shutdown. We you know we're, everybody was doing Zoom readings. Uh, we were kind of examining the Zoom readings. Some of them were more successful than others. Uh, one thing that we had concluded after a year of of, of Zoom readings was that it, it it might be nice to do something more than talking heads and frames. Um, that that was kind of the 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 base baseline that we started with. Can we go beyond talking heads with in frames? And immediately, my first one of the first decisions I made last year when we decided to do this was, I ain't trying this without a, without technologists. I'm just not going to even try it. So uh, we were we reached out and Carly, I found I found you randomly, didn't I? I found you randomly on the internet. Do you remember? I was I came to the True Speak or I came to True and then I think I emailed you because there's a little talk about video in the room and I was like I do video I did a virtual production and I sent it to you and you were like okay you're gonna work here yeah okay. yeah and um even I'm trying to remember how I I, I guess I, from the beginning I knew that you that you, you did tech right yes I think you did but at the time you did not know how much <laughs> um, I didn't know how much was how much. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know anything. <laughs> right. Um, so I, I introduced myself as, as a video maker uh, and editor. Um, 
but the fact that I have worked um, all across the board uh, for almost every single technical thing, as well as as a dramaturg uh, on other pieces in live theater and so on, um, you did not know at the beginning. Well, I want to just say- You do this, now. <laughs> oh, I do now. I, in spades, I know, really, wow. Um, I, I, didn't, right. I didn't know, I knew enough to know that I couldn't imagine that I would successfully able to be able to do this without having a strong technical support. Um, also, uh, another thing that, that I want to actually mention, because so, some other people may have gone through this as well, um, I was attached to the idea of live, of things being live. If I was going to take a live benefit uh, that I'd been doing in Caroline's or Sardi's or Lucky Chang's one year, um, if I was going to take a live benefit, I wanted to bring it to um, to the virtual world with a sense of it, with it having some elements that felt live as well. Um, and it was Jim Kirsted, honestly, who had a conversation with me about the fact that live is very nice, except that so many things can go wrong on virtual. Uh, and he, he said that I should record everything. I came to a compromise on that. We recorded almost everything, but I wanted to have live elements in the event just to give a sense of, of presence to, to the people that were attending. Um, so, that there would, so that there would be a reason for them to attend the opening performance rather than stream it on demand four days after, after it. I wanted something to be there that would be um, engaging and live and have that feeling to it. So the only things that I wanted being live were my, my speech. And, um, and what else did we do live? Um, well, I mean, we had all the intros. presentations, all the intros of each yeah, of the plays yeah. done live. But I mean, you see this gray hair? That, that yeah. started last year during Truth Be One. <laughs> <laughs> because you kept coming up with all these great ideas and like, okay, Bob, I hear what you're saying, but we are running out of time. And some of this we really need to um, yeah. think about. So we, we spent a long time figuring out how we could do it. But once we had the formula, which was that we have uh, all the, the plays recorded and edited post um, then we have as many live introductions as we possibly can. And we try to recreate the club feel with the voiceovers, um, which- you know, Basically what we did, we had, I had, I wrote introductions for all of the pieces of the benefit and they were done. Everybody said, what do you want on screen? I said, I want nothing. I want a blackout. <laughs> I want a voice in the dark. Like you would have a, a voice in the theater when you're sitting in a dark theater. So that was another thing that we tried to do that would create the illusion of it being a live live performance. But the thing I want to go back to, to Jim Kirstead, um, basically it was, he said that just so, too many things can go wrong. You're, the Wi-Fi can drop out, um, there's lag, there's latency, there's, I don't know, there's a, probably a couple other L words that I don't know. Um, but he's begged me, he said, you have, to, you have to record things. So he finally got me to, to accept that. And as a live theater guy, Accepting recorded material in video land was 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 difficult for me. I, 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 it was a real change. It was real a leap a, a leap of faith for me. Um, so um, that that that's kind of the background that I wanted to give everybody because I think everybody still goes through these conversations. Um, let's see. We got so what happened with us is we solicited the scripts. We got a hundred and how many did we get? A hundred and 30. This year it was 130. 100, oh, it's more than actually more than 130 scripts. We had them read, and we 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 were determined to get it down to 12 semifinalists. We could only get it down to 27 semifinalists because everything was so good, um, and it was very difficult paring it down and getting seven pieces that we thought were not only not necessarily the best but seven terrific pieces that would work well together um that was also a, there was programming involved in this as well um and then there was also the whole and this is where i introduced the directors you see i've got this plan here this all the this whole thing where the directors were going to read the finalists and pick the ones that they wanted to do so that brings me to let's 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 do ladies first andrea um did I give did I give you a bunch of plays to read did, or did, did I just say do this one? I think I gave you a bunch. Yes, you did. And then I chose one and then you're like, oh, no, that's taken by Bob Puccio. 
Um, <laughs> Bob Cuccioli was, he jumped right in yeah. early and said, I want to do this piece. It's like, okay, it's Bob Cuccioli, sure. I had connected to it because um, I did a couple of uh, Stop Asian Hate fundraisers that it had a kind of Asian hate theme. So, um, and then I was out, uh, I was out. You were like, oh, sorry, no space for you. And then Mary Davis really liked slave trade. And then you're like, hey, there's, there, there's one. Okay, so so uh, this so this is this is supposed to like a full disclosure moment. So it's, um, oh, I'm completely transparent. That's my style. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay, so I'll be transparent you. with you. We had we had, <laughs> I had I had planned on doing six pieces because right. I was concerned about the the timing on it. At that point, we were talking about possibly honoring somebody, and we were also talking about Van Dirk Fisher, who had died. Um, in September, right. uh, October, he had directed a piece for us last year. He was very near and dear to us, and we wanted to remember him. So there were all these other elements, and I thought six was about as many as we could probably handle. And um, and then my selection committee <laughs> fought very hard to get um, slave trade in, uh, and we're, I'm, obviously I'm glad that we did it because slave trade was was a terrific piece, and uh, and. I asked you if you were interested in directing it, and you jumped. You jumped on it, so that all yeah. worked out very well. I, I'm so glad I did because it was a really different process for me, and so creatively rewarding. And um, I re really, it was a, a good fit because, as a choreographer, I I edit my own choreography reels now, and um, I really want to get more and more into film. So working with Carly and Joe on. Um, all the camera angles and how we could tell the story it, uh, because a lot of it was about power and, and the shift, you know, so we talked dramaturgically about, about that, when that happened, Janelle helped us also with, with exactly when the, the power dynamics were shifting and then Carly and Joe and I talked about, well, how are we going to see that visually? So we thought about how Alex is going to, if you haven't seen it, it's about an Alexa device. Uh, who's being abused and then she she ends up they end up switching and that that was the other thing too the ending uh was something that came out of our collaboration the ending well, was totally let's different. let's take it let's take it a step backward because I, I want to try to okay. first, of all, first of all i want i want to ask joe joe nelms whether he would mind coming into the conversation since you were you were the editor for for this piece um let's see if he shows up or not there he is. So you were the editor for the piece. So let's start. Let's start from script to concept. Um, for slave trade, Mary, Mary Davis was very much uh, guiding this process because she loved that piece and she 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 desperately, dearly, dearly wanted it. And I I actually wanted it in two. It's just that I didn't. I was I was afraid of seven pieces, um, so I hesitated. But this was a script. Um, if anybody who didn't see it, it's a two character play. It's, it's actually one character and one, one offstage voice. It's the voice of Alexa. And uh, the character is a uh, businessman, uh, kind of an, an unlikable guy who's kind of rude and demanding. Um, and he demands a little bit too much of Alexa and uh, he gets surprised. So it was, James is going to be on with us in uh, uh, April 20, 29th, I think it is, um, or 34, I don't know when it is, the end of April. Um, the show was not, the play was not conceived of for, for virtual, and yet it seemed like a natural piece for virtual, just, it seemed to be so, just, just, just right for it. Uh, so Andrea, when you so, first read it, um, did you have specific ideas about how to film it? Or were you hoping that you were going to have a, somebody to hold your hand and, and guide you on this? Well, it was like a, a nut that had to be cracked open. And then when it did, then so we had to really brainstorm with, with the writer uh, about seeing it as a film. I mean, the way the switch had to be made from it being a play that was being filmed and being a film, which it was a film because 
because of, you know, we were in there with the camera and the, the actor was holding the camera and then having point of view. So it wasn't just something that was happening that was being filmed. Once, once everybody got excited about the, the way that we could use film to tell the story and all the possibilities, then it, then all the ideas started flowing, but there was that, that initial switch that we had to make that, you know, it was like you said, going from live to, to virtual. And the interesting thing is yeah. Yeah. anybody who saw slave trade probably can't imagine how you would do it on stage. Um, do you, I know it. I know it can be done, and also we should also mention that the the ending the ending was was uh, something a specific problem that had to be solved. Uh, the ending was using um, a song that uh, that we didn't have the rights to, and in spite of people arguing, well, it's it's only going to be two measures. Certainly, we can use that. the The truth of the matter is, you can't. You have to get the rights to use use a song, even if it's even it's if it's one measure of a song. Um, so. Uh, you actually, somebody must have held um, Ian's hand and and helped him rethink the ending. How did that happen? Well, it was all about power dynamics and uh, it was in the room and we were saying, well, it's really like, like, what if they switch places? What if, what if Alexa now is, is in control? Because really that's, what was happening in his ending, she was making him sing respect. So she was taking control and she's taking control slowly. Um, so I, I don't know if it was, I think it might've been me that said, well, what if they switched? And now, now, now should we see it? We also wanted to see Brenda Braxton. So that was part of it. You, know, that was, you don't that cast was, Brenda Braxton and keep her off right, stage. Right, you know, it was like, we we want to see her. So uh, that was the impetus for it. But it also made sense dramaturgically that that now she's in the power seat. And I had this image I watched, I watched Succession and there was an opening shot of like the back of the chair, you know, uh, like the executive chair, the power chair. So we started with that with Bob and then we ended, the ending was that she was in the chair and it was, we tried to do a slow reveal, you know, so we just see the back of her head and then we see she's, she's, with, she's planning a vacation that Bob's going to be paying for and she's putting on nail polish, you know, and then she turns and we get to see her. And then- and Not, not me, her. Bob. This was, the, the character's name was Bob. Yeah, right, right. Anybody who's confused. <laughs> And then somewhere along the line, we thought, well, uh, during the credits, you know, we could show her on vacation. And she had this great video of her literally like holding a martini glass uh, in the waves, you know, in some tropical island. So she she sent that to us. Well, I, I basically I want to commend you on using the you use the medium as well as it possibly could be used for that play. And you know, kudos to you for that, um, Carly. When did you come on board? Because um, you were the director of photography. Yeah, I think they were already y'all were already meeting before I came on board, right? Um, I think Eben and Joe were responsible for pulling me in. This is correct. yes. No, it was Mary. <laughs> Mary had seen the the benefit last year, the gala last year. She, I um, think Mary, it, told me Mary took credit for you. <laughs> And, and she should, like, because I mean, should. she she reeled her in, but Mary yeah. contacted me first and asked, so I want you. And I said, sorry, this year, I'm not going to do any work apart from the benefit itself. I'm not going to work on any plays. So she was like, oh, ah, what then? And I said, well, Mary, I would recommend that you reach out to Carly because I know she's phenomenal and you would have, um, you know, you know, she did Game Boy last year and she's like, oh, I now I remember. And then she, and here's the information here, how you get hold of Carly. So within a day or two, I think Carly was all trussed up and signed up, right, Carly? <laughs> yeah, I was told uh, she doesn't take no for an answer. So I said, I guess I, <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I guess I'm on board. <laughs> 
Um, so but... let, 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 another another conversation uh, that 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 is I've had to had have, have over the past two years is what do we call technical people that are working on these things? And I fell in love with the word technologist. And from the from the beginning, I kept talking about technologists, technologists, technologists. Turns out the technologists don't like to be called technologists. They, <laughs> they want to be called director of photography and film editor. Well, that depends on what it is that you're doing. Yeah. Well, I, technologist it's, was an all encompassing uh, term exactly. that I thought really. It just it, covered the it, whole. It covers everything. Yeah. But you know, if if you look at it from a programming point of view, if you have three technologists on one piece and only one on the other, you don't really understand what each of them did. So that's why I decided when um, I had to do some quick tap dancing as the technical director and executive producer of this, and all the teams, many of the teams, not all of them, many of the teams kept losing their technologists. So it's like, okay, we need to figure out how we can then pull people in. And we had uh, projects like Glenn's project that lost their technologist and you know, never really had someone who could do for director of photography while that happened. I was step basically pulled in in the middle of that. Um, and we had this to- This is just to let everybody know that things did not go smoothly for the benefit. No, <laughs> but we managed to pull it so, off. So it, that's how technology. Some depend, it, you know, technology just doesn't fit into the normal understanding of what actually needs to be done. So sometimes you need to, as a technology, work as a director of photography, which I know Carly is brilliant at. She's also a brilliant editor. But then someone else who's not here today, who should have been here, Katie. <laughs> said, I need Carly, I worked with her last year, I need her and I cannot do my piece without her. So <laughs> this one here puts a thinking head on saying, okay, if I can backfill, because yeah, directory of photography is up front um, and kind of planning as well and executing and editing, it can be done after the fact, um, once you've been given good enough footage, that kind of thing. So I, for some of the teams, I basically had to split it up. Um, and that's why we had Slave Train being so brilliantly super stacked with both an excellent director of photography and a superb editor in your nails. Uh, so let's, let's go to that. Actually, Carly, I'm going to have you uh, do double duty and, and talk about um, working as a director of photography with Katie and working with as director of photography with with Andrea, wh what the differences were, how your job changed, what you did. People, people, you know, we're we're, we're theater people. We don't think of director of photography. We don't you, you be basic about it. Talk about placing somebody in a frame. Talk about lighting the frame. Talk about all the things that have to happen so that people can understand what they need to do if they're going to do this. Gosh. Okay. Yeah, so the two different processes uh, for anti-vaxxers slave trade were really, really different. Um, working on slave trade, uh, we worked really, we worked together to come up with how we were gonna use the language of film. So this is what Andrea was talking about with like, you know, uh, power and trying to show that. And we came up with basically a list of shots and Joe and I were able to work together to also say like, what do you need to make this happen? Like, what kind of shots do you need from me? That way you're fully covered so like okay we always need like inserts of alexa because every time we hear her talk we just want to like just see her and then you can just use that one shot again and again so kind of coming up with a strategy for what we were going to do when we got into the room we were actually really lucky to be able to film uh with bruce and with brenda so that was a lot easier last year it was like filming remotely like completely on a computer saying set up the camera the actor did it all by themselves so being able to be in the room was a lot easier. Like I am a video person. So being able to operate the camera myself was like, made it just a thousand times easier. Um, and yeah, and we also didn't have that much time. Like when you shoot a film thing, you're shooting for days and days, we were going in for like four hours. So it's also kind of saying with the time we have, with the constraints we have, with using an iPhone, how are we gonna do this? So there was like practical considerations as well as artistic considerations there. And then for working with Katie on anti-vaxxers, I was not going to be in the room. Katie was going to be in the room with the actress, Beanne Cox. And so there it was more me coming up with, with Katie. She knew what she wanted really clearly, but figuring out how we were going to shoot it, uh, how we were going to make it like work within the time frame. So I felt like that one was basically 
logistical, honestly, like coming up with a schedule and coming up with like, okay, you can shoot this whole section in one chunk. You need two different angles. Okay, this shot, you only need one angle. So more of just like a list of things that she was going to do in the room. And then I was on Zoom talking her through it, going like, make sure you get that shot. If you don't get that, you're going to have, you're not going to have what you need. So yeah, very different processes. One I felt like was more hands-on and one was just more like I'm, you know, logically, logistically on the other end of the computer, kind of like directing the, uh, directing, not directing, not directing the actor, but directing like how the shots were going to happen. So Joe, that- from your, your, your perspective, uh, she, Carly indicated that you were involved with the directing, you were involved supporting her as director of photography from the start because you were telling her the shots that you thought you would you would need as the editor. So s- s- sort of uh, pull those two pieces apart and, and, and let us look at them individually. Um, wait, which two pieces? Yeah, we, we... sorry. What... The, the director of photography, uh, and setting up the shots and what you need, the, the thought process that you go through as the film editor, when you're looking ahead at what you're gonna need. Um... Um, Carly had a pretty fully realized vision for the shots she needed. And I just kind of double checked with uh, stuff I knew that I would need. As an editor, you always want to have coverage, you want to have options, you know, so that you can, you can increase or decrease pace and, and build tension or release it, you know, so you want to, want to be able to sort of play all those different, uh, they're like notes on the keyboard, you know, you want to, you want your, your options to, uh, otherwise you're just stuck with stuff that you, you, you know, aren't with a flow that you, you, you don't love. So that's, that's really what we talked about. Um, but she had, a, she had a pretty good, she kind of knew what she wanted. I, I just asked questions like, you're going to get coverage of Alexa, right? Oh, yes. And then we talked about maybe how we would build that tension um, throughout the story, right? So maybe some of the shots, um, we would start out with uh, a, a wider shot and get closer and closer on Alexa to kind of indicate that she's getting mad. Or And then maybe once, you know, there's a certain turn in the story, we go from, from shooting, um, you know, like mid-level to sh- looking up at her. So she looks a little bit formidable. Or put her in the foreground. So she's more of a presence, you know, and, and encroaching on Bob's space, that kind of thing. So that was that was the collaboration really there. Yeah, we tried to give Joe all the tools he would need to like shape and massage the story into what, like the pace that he needed. So just making sure. And I'm an editor myself, so I feel like it made the collaboration easier because I knew what I would need if I was editing it. So we were able to work pretty, pretty easily together to come up with it. Okay, so we're going to move. To, we're going to move to Glenn. There's there's a lot more I want to know from from everybody, and uh, also everybody in the room. Please ask questions. Put questions in, in the chat, and, and Connor, keep an eye on the chat for me. Um, I like these to be conversations. Just a reminder to everybody. Uh, Glenn, yours is a different situation. Uh, you, um, we tried, but we didn't necessarily have a tech person with you from the start, but you had experience because you'd done the, done one of the plays last year. That, 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 that served you, that helped you, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, last year, I, I had Eben as my technologist and uh, she held my hand all the way. And, and whatever I, I needed, um, she was there. I could ask her questions. Uh, whether it was about green st- screen and if this was going to work, if that was going to work, and and she gave me all of that. Um, and having worked in television for years kind of helped out too. I mean, I was not a TV director; I was special effects director, but we shot lots and lots of uh, remotes and skits and stuff. So, so I observed how a lot of that stuff was done. So, um, uh, but this time around, uh, for obstacle, I, I didn't have. Um, and technologists. There was one moment where I definitely needed one, and I texted uh, even like a madman, "You get touch with me now!" And uh, and she did, and uh, she she came through and helped me with that one shot, and that was that was pretty much it. And um and once we got everything on on uh, tape on the iPhone, um and with this, the, and the most important thing I think uh for the way we did both of our films was being able to send people green screens so that we could put the actors where we wanted to put the actors or locations, uh, scenery or whatever. 
And uh, and then that's where a lot of the magic and editing comes together is once we put them where we want them to be. And in ops, uh, in out of order, we had three separate bed, we had two different bedrooms, and and a, and sort of like a living room, and with three actresses in different places. One was in Malibu, I think. One was in Connecticut, and one was in Detroit. And uh, we were able. To, and, one, and, one was, and one was Billie Eilish's mother. One in Malibu, I guess you guessed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maggie, uh, yeah. and she was great and just easy to work with, and. Um, and then once we got those things together, it got down to, it came down with for last year, Even and I just trying to bounce them off of one another. So it sounded like one fluid conversation. And in um, Obstacle, we put uh, the, the, uh, the Danny Bolero's character um, in an old fashioned interrogation room, the kind with the, the light above his head because we wanted it shining down on him with a black background because we, we just decided to do it in black and white and um and not having even hurt but then Jens her husband um was able to uh edit for me and he and I had the same sort of relationship um he kind of some a lot of times he was a little ahead of me he saw where I was going and he would suggest something How about this and I'm, that's exactly what I'm thinking so it, it it's the relationship is what makes it fun and um um and so we were also we had time constraints because we only had we, we did it all in one shot on obstacle and I really wanted to get a whole another set of shots, but Danny was about to uh, go into rehearsal for Plaza Suite, so we only had him for so long, and so we were fighting the clock and so we didn't get that second series of shots, and oh, one day I think it was the same clock you were fighting, Andrea, you were fighting the clock as well. Yeah, we had we had to shoot it in the evening because that's how it was written, and ah. uh, yeah, everyone's schedules. So we went, we all we tra tra traipsed up to Bob's place up uh, in Westchester. And, Bob, you uh, mean Bruce? Bruce. Bruce, I'm sorry. It, the actor's it, name is Bruce uh, Sabbath. The, character, the character's the name character is Bob, played, which is similar yeah, to my I, name. Right. <laughs> the character Bob played by. Bruce Sabbath, who was, um, he actually went on as Tevya in the Yiddish Fiddler, the, this latest one. I don't know if you guys were following in the chat the night of the performance, but there was one point where I said, I have to change my name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just humiliated. <laughs> um, I, Andrea and Glenn, as directors, what are the skills that you use in theater that you bring to film? And what are the things that you have to think of differently? Uh, if you were advising a director, a theater director who wanted to try this, what would you warn them about? What would you tell them to, to bring with them? Well, to bring well, um, go ahead. I think the things that, uh, should I go? I'm sorry, you can go. No, 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 you. Oh, okay. Um, uh, the things, obviously working with an actor, um, you know, that's the same. In terms of intention, we had we had a rehearsal on Zoom, and we gave notes, you know, like a normal rehearsal, and um, and then in the room, I had to be there on on book and feeding Bruce Alexa's lines. So that was funny because I was also you know turning lights on and off and and working with Carly with the placement of the different iPhones and. <laughs> so we were Carly and I were also the crew you know we were there ironing the green screen and um what I would say uh in terms of pitfalls perhaps is um what I think what Carly and I did with with the first shoot which was with Bruce we really went through every moment she did a shot list and then I started putting the shot list in the script because that's the way I I think, you know, like, and then that led to stage directions. It was really collaborative because it was written that Alexa was just sitting on the desk, but Carly put Alexa on the other side of the room, which was like a light bulb. Oh, he can get up, he can go to her. And then, then we thought, oh, we can see her turning upside down. And, you know, it just one thing led to another. It was so, so much fun that way because- My, uh, favorite, my favorite line, were you just looking at my bottom? Yeah, we had, you know, Bruce was, Bruce held, held it upside down. So we, yeah. 
Um, I mean, Andrea, yeah, hearing you, yeah, I was just gonna say, hearing you describe it this way, it really strikes me that like we both trained as choreographers, and I feel like yes. you could totally see it in the way we thought this through, and like, yeah, like, totally clicked for us when we started thinking about movement. Just funny. Yes. You, well, that to me cracked everything open when you put Alexa on the other side of the room on the shelf. The minute I saw that she's on the shelf. Then, then there was all this movement and yeah. yeah, and that, that made it so much more interesting. And the, yes, I think you're right. The fact that we're both choreographers and, and, and have a dance background, but yeah. I, what I would say to the director is really go through line by line and think about what's important and how we want to see it. Um, and make sure, you know, like you said, like Joe said, you get enough coverage. I have we had two iPhones. Uh, we didn't do as much with Brenda, and that that some things fell through the cracks because it was a short thing. And I think both of us thought, "Oh, we've got this. You know, we know what we want." And we didn't really, really, really fine tune it and have a specific list. And, and well, the that. rest of us didn't that couldn't that couldn't tell that. Dark, short, huh? The Sorry? the finished product was was terrific. We 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 wouldn't we didn't know that that you. That you had more in mind than than, than we saw in the final. It it, it seemed pretty tight, uh, uh, which which brings and me to Joe. That's actually, the benefit of having an excellent editor. I yes. So, right. so, so, really so, so, so Joe, you talk about the process for you. Um. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm not. Where where do you start with this? We um, the process for me, I kind of was on the. The, uh, the sidelines, kind of watching the whole thing as they went through it, just kind of keeping an eye on it. And then once I got everything, um, for me, the process is laying it all out, just the rough version. And then you just whittle it down until there's just no, until it's just airtight with between, um, you know, every story beat. There's no, I like a really lean edit, really like, you know, there's no fluff. There's, you're not waiting for someone to say their next line. I think it kind of, especially in this kind of venue where it's so easy for people to click away, to look at their emails or, you know, you want to keep this action moving. So that was, for me, it was lay it all out and go, okay, well, there's plenty of air here, cut that out, cut this here. Maybe this dialogue starts a little under this one so that we kind of keep that moving. Maybe you slide a little bit of somebody's visual over somebody else's just kind of, to give the eye and the ear always something to, to be doing, right? Something to listen to or something to see that kind of keeps everything going. So that was it for me. It was, was really just, uh, I had to keep kind of cutting that down from wherever we started 12 minutes to down to 10 minutes. And I do apologize. We went over seven, seven seconds. Sorry. No, but Joe, you were involved with the meetings. We, with our creative meetings, you had a lot of input. In terms of the storytelling, and I did. Mm -hmm. I did bloviate quite a bit during the meetings. I've yeah. watched that story. Do you say bloviate? Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's all. There's a word you don't hear all a lot. It was really yeah. about the story and Janelle, Janelle as well. You know, there were some issues, um, some sensitivities that we were concerned about and we were we were all thinking about that we were all plugged into it you weren't you weren't just on the side on the sidelines for that process as far as i was concerned so i want to i'm going to return to, to glenn for, uh, for a second for more than a second because you actually you were in some ways your own director of photography weren't you uh pretty much um well he danny had a iphone 12 i believe 12 or 13 and uh i heard 13. i think 13 yeah i think you're, i think you're right and so we we used this computer as sort of the control room so i could see what he was doing and put the camera above it and we lit the background and we lit him and um and we knew just once we had him the way we wanted to see him we could move him and put him where we wanted to put him although we did have a problem because we, we shot in two different locations the first location was a friend of his that he thought was going to have much more room and it turned out it wasn't much more room <laughs> and so we had to shoot in the kitchen that we had a wall and so we, we were shooting through there so we had this hard line that we had to eliminate 
And then his friend came in later and said, you're still here and kicked him out. You know, we got kicked out. And so we had to pick up at his place the next day. And it's so much more room. It's like, dude, what are you talking about? We should have shot the whole thing here in the first place. Uh, but with Jens, we, we did all sort of things to, to, to hide that. And um, I, don't th I don't think anyone noticed it or not. Maybe you did. If, yeah. But um, well, there's some more basic things that, that I'd like you to talk about. Um, you said you shot in black and white. You, sh you shot Danny in black and white. You had color imagery throughout, throughout the... You didn't shoot Danny in black and white? No, we didn't shoot. No, we, we converted it to black and oh, white. Oh, converted. Okay, well, yeah, but all I'm saying, I'm, forgive me, I'm not being technical. I'm just saying that you gave the impression that the, the film was in black and white, and it wasn't. His part was in black and white, and the outside shots, the exterior shots were all color. And I, and I did gonna, all of that photography. Yeah, so talk about that. Um, well, it, it was, if you saw the story or didn't see the story, it was about a driving ed, driver's ed teacher who was also the designated, one of the designated teachers to carry a gun uh, on a, at a high school. And, um, and so I didn't want to um, just put, put him on a course somewhere, make it look like, you know, little cars driving slowly around and because that was one choice. But he kept, the, the writer put in the line, respect the weapon you're wielding and the first thing because he tells the kids the gun is a, a car is like a weapon and so when he said that it's like hmm i think the route i want to go is cars are moving fast we're going to go the opposite way because it is dangerous and i live right here by the fdr and um and there is i live right at um where the park is here on, on the east side where the mayor's office is mayor's home and there's a hill that has a grate on the top of it, and you can see down into the FDR. And so I'm able to shoot down and see the cars going by above. And I figured all of the things with the cars should be in color, to, so as to, to juxtapose what's going on in his head, because everything was moving so fast. He's a good guy that's all of a sudden caught, caught in this situation. So I wanted it to be dangerous because cars move dangerous, and also this is also what's going on inside his head. He's a good guy that caught up, got caught up in a situation that he could not and probably would not ever get out of. If that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Um, so the, the the thing that I the thing that, that impresses me is the fact. Well, there are a couple of things. I, you had said in in another conversation that you shot everything through bars. Um, yes. So talk a little bit about that as well. Well, um, since our interrogation room was, you know, there's the light and the black, the back wall, what is this guy fearing? He's fearing going to jail for the rest of his life. And like he said, I'm, I'm just a, a, a driver's ed teacher, for God's sake. But this is this could have been his future. So even there's one spot also by the FDR where it goes along ground level and there's bars there and I shot through the bars. And that was the only time I shot the cars not going fast, they were going in slow motion. And so I shot through bars there, shooting through the grading was another form of, of bars. And even when I used, looked at the high school, which is actually my gym, uh, looks like a high school. Uh, I shot through the gates, so that also looked like bars. And I, I just wanted to put him in that situation that jail could be his future. Um, I'm going to turn to you for a second, Eben, because you have a broad overview of, of all seven plays. We had seven pieces. Um, yes. We're able today to talk about uh, three of them. Am I, that's, that's right. It's Obstacle. Slave Trade. Um, and the first and uh, Anti Waxes, which was the opening number, and Obstacle. So let's talk about uh, Eben. Uh, we are given a, a rule from um, Theater Authority that we can only uh, shoot actors in their individual spaces and people have to be uh, in their own in their own spaces when when we're shooting them we didn't we we stretched that a, li a little uh, we could talk about bob cuccioli because bob made a decision to use non-union actors and so he could shoot in a theater so let's start with the this the piece that had that was actually shot like a film and let's move through some of the other pieces if you can even and tell us what the different artistic choices were. Uh, like, I know people are interested to know when people were uh, shot in, their, in individual spaces and then combined or, or when they were actually in rooms together. Right. 
So Bob's piece was he's blown away, which is with the, the two young boys and um, um, the young Asian um, female. Uh, and basically, he treated it very much like a film, as as did the. I mean, it was still shot on an iPhone, but um, there was a lot of um, moving of the camera. Um, walking around the actor, the actor. Um, so it, it became a dance actually between what the camera did and what the actors did. Um, and um, doing it was also the, that was a technologist. That was one person's Mitch Gatton who did that. Uh, sorry, no, he wrote it. Um, he's um, uh, Brian Lawton. Brian Lawton, Brian Lawton. Um, and, and basically he decided because Bob and Brian knew each other from before, that this was how, how it was going to be. Um, and for Bob, it was really, really important to show something that looked like that gym environment. It ended up actually being a stage, right? But um, something that, that looked like it could have been in a high school. The other extreme for that one really is uh, Every Creeping Thing which really was really followed followed the, the theater authority rules. Every actor was in their own space and everything had to be combined. Luckily for us, the play, the piece was about a Zoom call, but uh, talk about what, what was done beyond just the Zoom call and how, how that was sort of beefed up. Right, in, in, in order to do something like every creeping thing, um, and, and we did more of that last year, but uh, in every creepy thing, it was uh, each of the five actors was filmed separately. Um, they were filmed on a green screen and they were basically put together in the computer uh, by the editor who also happened to be the um, director of photography, Henry Garou. Um, and basically Henry has massive experience in doing this because that's his business in, in real life. Um, and he did a lot of editing, not using standard tools, but tools that have been used for film and, and uh, station, stadion um, displays. So he did what's called compositing. He built the environment they were in. He found backgrounds that he put on the green screen behind them and he made them move in order to make them feel like they were in uh, this uh, film environment, which he totally created it wasn't zoom it was a film that looked like it was a zoom um and, and let's see we're trying to think with what what are we forgetting we're leaving out some um, um we also oh, only, have only uh, uh, only, black only black and cold and cold bread. Cold bread. yeah those the, the, so you have directors who started off with sh with uh, shot lists then they then they start with well, let's talk about that because that was that was cold bread. Um, that was Rain Pryor. She was the director on that, and she um, was very early on creative and saying, "I want this to be filmed as a film." But I had very specific, and she had literally two and a half page that um, most people it's one big monologue and could be very difficult to visualize, but she had some great idea. But this was a woman walking into this fertility clinic um, that. Um, you know, where she's talking to her, her embryo, uh, who happens to have a white dad, and this was a black woman uh, talking, um, and it, it's talking about racism. So, um, right, um, Rain knew what she wanted. What she didn't get early on was an editor technologist that she couldn't work with, um, that knew how to do the compositing that was needed for that. Um, and it took a little while to find her one. Um, we ended up with, um, with uh, Espy, who um, is really a sound editor, and, but has some enormously interesting takes on how things could look. And one of her key points was to do projections on top of people. So I, the opposite in a way than having a green screen. Um, and that was incorporated into uh, to that piece. Um, so it, it was, it, Rain ended up being uh, quite happy with that piece, but she's like, I wish I had more time. But I think that is also true for Katie and uh, several others. <laughs> the time, um, the, issue, last the, one the was, time issue came in because, because it was difficult to cast. So people got their, their actors very late and it was also difficult to, for us to make matches with technologists this year. Um, we will, 
you know, I'll try this. I'm going to try this again next year. I think I, I love, I love this whole process and I love doing these benefits like this, but um, we'll see my board, my, my board may not want to, um, but. <laughs> the last one was, was only black. Uh, oh, yeah. And again, um, that was um, a director who probably I'm, I'm going to say because of that was Ben Harley. Um, he also was lacking from getting an actor in well in time. Um, and he ended up with an actor that we should all know from TV, Guy um, Whitlock, Whitlock, who um, Ben knew personally, and therefore Ben felt confident that Guy could have his wife uh, film him. So all the filming that was done of, why, of Guy was uh, done by his wife, but we also faced um, some issue with um, an upcoming surgery that it had to be filmed within a certain space uh, time frame, um, and it turned out the whole thing about lighting and uh, making sure, for instance, that like black. When you're a black person, and I'm sure that theatre people know this as well as as film people should know, but it needs different color. You need different lighting on on different skin tones, right, Glenn? <laughs> you know, so uh, and um, I, it, it, that piece lacked a little bit from that. That it it basically didn't uh, get lit enough. Um, and um, we again, it was a piece that was put together because we had to do with what we had. Um, um, and um, it, it's same thing with the audio. The audio was uh, on on that piece was also kind of funky in between. And you could hear that in the editing when you have something that's been filmed over like four days and the audio, the microphone is placed in different locations and uh, it, the room hasn't been padded because one of that one was not filmed on green screen. Uh, it was just in the room. Uh, it, it was not that there's anything, you know, it was in the room. Um, and um, basically um, the post editing of trying to edit the audio without losing the action um, on the video itself visually was, um, was interesting. Um, and for that one, again, um, initially, Ben thought that, and Guy had, all, a guy had offered to um, edit his, this piece himself. He halfway through, he gave up and said, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> um, and I think that is one of the key. Um, Who wound up editing learning. Black? Sorry? Who wound up editing well, Black? Uh, most of the editing was done by um, a guy uh, that I found through Eric. And thank you for that, Eric. Uh, um, there was a time midway through this process where I was literally emailing every day to three or four different potential editors just to get them to sign up and do this and step in. Um, and Martin Cornelis, uh, who is a sound guy, um, and therefore giving him this piece where there's a lot of sound issue was kind of a challenge for him. Uh, <laughs> and Carly's Nick nodding because she knows that from Game Boy last year. <laughs> I mean, I just feel like audio is the one place that like we still have bounds to go in. Like that's some just all of these roles in film are done by separate people. But like audio is an entire person that's just focused on getting audio with like hundreds of dollars worth of equipment. And we're like not there. Uh iPhones are okay, but it's just one of those things. Um yeah, we had Brenda sitting in her closet and you could see she was on Zoom because we were working with Bruce and you could see, you know, the clothes hanging over her head. Yeah. In her Which room. is really good because it, it yeah. muffles the, yes. all the extra room sound. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like a thing you do, you go, do you have blankets you can just put on the floor to absorb sound? Like if they're not in the image, mm -hmm. like it's really pillows, pillows uh, go in your closet, record in the smallest room you can. Like it's very... The things we've done are very could, yeah. Could we could we come up with a checklist for people? Um, oh, we will. Why don't we do a checklist and, all, and offer will. it to all the people that come to to the, the community gathering? Um, Look, I, I need to know something. Um, our our sound was fine, but on the show itself, our our music dropped out. All of our music yes. dropped out. And, well, and do we know what happened there? Yes, I think we I do. I didn't even know there was I, music. I, I, Oh yeah, it, I mean, 
there was music at the top and the bottom, but there was music throughout, which my brother did. And uh, <laughs> so he's a little upset, <laughs> but I'm the oldest, so it's okay. Um, uh, yeah, what what happened? I'm just joking. He really wasn't. But uh, what's, what's, what happened? Um, Where was the, the other challenge? Used? Sorry. I'm sorry? Where was the music used? Uh, well, there's uh, the biggest spot for music is when uh, Danny's character is talking about the in, uh, engaging the kid with the gun and that the moving background and the color behind him and the cars are zooming. There was some really erratic music that went with that. And all of that dropped out during the benefit. I, okay, so I, this is the first time I knew that there was music. Glenn, I don't think anybody knew that it wasn't there. I don't, I don't, so. I did. <laughs> but, but, but I don't think, I don't think it was to its. To I understand. Its I understand what you're saying. And I appreciate that. And that's, that's credit given to the writer and to the actor. Um, yeah. Plus they, they both pulled that off beautifully. So it was, so it was on the recorded video, but then it yes. was somehow during the broadcast. Exactly. Stream, it, it dropped out. Yeah. Yeah. There's a Zoom problem. I don't know, but you know, I just never got an answer to what actually happened. Anti-vaxxers had a little bit of that too. I think it's just, even can probably speak to it, but streaming is its own technical sure. part of this that Absolutely. even knows a lot more about that. Um, <laughs> we, again, did not have enough time to do proper tech for the streaming itself. Um, and this is one thing that if we actually, instead of focusing on the transitions, which we did do, and thank you for uh, Janelle to sit through all of that and pretend to be all the live people. Uh, when we ran the tech, um, ideally we should be able to run um, the event two or three times in advance of that before yeah. we actually sit there and do the streaming. And some of these pieces were delivered so late mm -hmm or were changed and then re-delivered that it basically messed up the whole setting up of the event. Yeah. I mean, even it was very, very close to perfect. Like I yeah. hats yeah. off to you just like, yeah. just yeah. enjoyable to watch, right? Like in yeah. the end. I'm not, even you know me, I'm not complaining. I just wanted to know what happened. Well, maybe you'll take that conversation off camera. <laughs> so, um, I, I want to invite everybody in the um, uh, in the room to to ask questions. Uh, is there anything else that you want to know? Um, if if you were deciding to, to actually go out and do something like this, do a, a, a video presentation of a, of a play, um, what would you need to know that, that we, we haven't talked about today? Um, we're at six we're at six thirty three, so we've 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 done our hour, but I want to leave a little bit of Q at Q and A open. Does everybody know how to, um, oh yes, Donald, this was a fundraising gala, correct? Um, <laughs> oh, oh yes, oh yes. Um, did, we, did we make, our, do you mean did we make our numbers? We, we made a little less than we made last year, but we, we, you know, we, made, we did well enough to, to keep running. So we're, we're, we're not closing yet. Um, we ain't down yet. Every, everybody, uh, do you know how to do the virtual hand raise or do you want to just put your audio on and come in and ask a question, whatever? Uh, if not, I'll wrap up and we can, do, we can do breakout rooms if Connor is still here to keep an eye on them or Sandy, because I'm Hello. not going to be able to stay. I can stay until seven. And Sandy, are you still here? No, Sandy left. Okay. Sandy was my backup. <laughs> um, so, Anybody have any any questions about about the event about about the, the how to I mean I, I like these things to be useful information it's not just anecdotal but things that you actually can go oh that's how you did that so let's see if I can figure out how to do it myself. Um, oh Jane Jane uh, Dubin said I'm going to make Jane a co-host uh, once I get everybody back in the room. Is that it, everyone? No, no other questions. You're you're all speechless. All right. So I'm going to say thank you to, uh, to everybody for being with us today. Thank you, Glenn, even Carly, Andrea, and Joe. Um, I appreciate your being here for the conversation. Um, and um, even I, I apologize that you weren't announced uh, in advance. 
Uh, you were on the website though, and you were in the and you were in the press release. So um, some people knew you were here, and I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. So thanks, and Andrea and Joe. Um, Joe, you were a man of so many talents. It's just unbelievable. Go Nelms. If you need anything done, ask Joe. If he doesn't know how to do it, he'll read up, 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 read up on it and, and do it for you. It's a, he's that kind of guy. Um, Happy to help. Let me know. Yeah. Thank you for doing this, Bob. This is a lot of fun. I learned from everyone else, from all the technologists and all the, and the other director and whatnot and everybody. We, we, you know, we have these challenges and we do something about making them art. Well, the, and, the practical, the little practical points, the details that that I'm that I'm interested in are um, setting up the frame, uh, getting people framed framed well, thinking thinking in terms of your shots. I mean, the talking heads and frames. We're, we're having conversations right now about our play reading series, and and everybody's like gasping at the idea of doing talking heads and frames. But if you think of the fact that you have uh, straight ahead, you have close, you have far away. You can turn, you can turn that way. I mean, you can make something of the talking hands of friends if, if you actually have a plan. If you sit down and do a shot list and say, this is, this is how I want it to happen. You can give some sense of movement to it, even if it's just a, a play reading. Uh, we weren't doing play readings. We were actually doing productions of these pieces. Yeah. So uh, that's a little different. But um, the, some of the specifics of, of the lighting, the, how to adjust the lighting, the, the virtual backgrounds. Uh, I want to make sure everybody, you know, checklists, all, checks off all of these things. Virtual backgrounds makes, it makes a huge difference if everybody can be against the, the same virtual background or if you can create neutral virtual backgrounds and have somebody who's good at editing and, and bring in back, backgrounds that are uniform. Because even if you, if I give you the background, not like I have right now, if I give it to you, it will look a little different on your camera and it'll look a little different on somebody else's camera. But if you have green screen and then somebody puts the background up against uh, against where you're, you're photographing yourself, everybody will look like they're in the same place. I mean, it is possible. There are things that can be done that, that fascinate me about virtual. I mean, I'm I was the last one to come into virtual and I'm the last one to leave now. Um, you know, I think it would be cool, Bob, if you don't mind me just interjecting here. Um, when you get, when you return to being live, it might be cool to have one or two of these just to, you know, look back at what, I'm not saying to do, the, the, to, to replay some of the old ones, but maybe do some new ones as well. I'd like to. I like yeah. this. I like, I like, I like the medium. I like the medium a lot. Yeah, um, so do I. So, well, you can uh, more people. Yeah, and we reach more people. I mean, the, the reason I love the virtual is because I have people from London, I have people from Australia, I have people from uh, Barcelona and, and California, and it, it makes a big difference. It's, it's, it kind of has changed our identity. And I've made yeah. good friends. Even and I are really good friends. We chat even between times. And so I, I really thank you for that because we've become very good friends. I think we all have, so. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you, my friends, for being with me today. And um, the usual reminder: we do this for free. If you if you don't if you don't feel like you can afford, we want you here anyway. But if you can pay something, um, it's true donate tru donate uh, It helps keep us going. Um, I mean, basically. <laughs> We got we got to pay bills. We have to, we have a staff. We have have things to do. And if we're going to go live, live triples my expenses. That's the other thing I have to say. It's I'm gonna the I have to get find space a space for a, a for the play reading series. It's going to cost me twelve to fifteen hundred dollars a performance. Um, and there's all sorts of other things involved as well. So truedonate.com. If you can come uh, and help us out a little bit, I'd really appreciate it. And um, Everybody can come into the room now. Um, thank you, YouTube viewers. Send an email to me, trunltd at aol.com, trunltd at aol.com. Uh, YouTube viewers, and then say Zoom me in, in the headline, and we'll, go, we'll send you invitations every week, and you can come be part of the room. Um, that's it. That's all, folks.